Well, Gemma reckons it's cold outside. I kind of doubt it. Right, we came into the brew shed yesterday and uh, look at the peak. <laughs> I was kind of concerned because the temperature, for some reason, said 30. 30 dungarees science, which was troubling for me. So I had a play with it, and as soon as I moved the thermo probe, it shot back to where it should be at around, oh listen to the racket, at around 18 degrees. So I put this in there and it's telling me that the maximum we had in there was 16 degrees and the minimum was 14. So that's telling me that it's 17.6 on the actual beer itself. So what I'm going to do today is, because she's fermenting nicely, is I'm just going to pop that up and just let it free rise to 21 and hopefully mop up some of the diacetyl that was possibly in there. I guess it's a bit cooler because it rained. <laughs> You're right, cheeky pools. You want some water before I go to work? Oh, you're getting violent, are you, buddy? Hey, come on then. I'll fight you. Come on then, big lad. Ooh, hey, oh. Come on then. <coughs> Who's that? <laughs> You've been laying eggs, madam. We'd like to welcome Gemma to the unit. Hey, this is the unit, love, where all the work happens. Hello. Hey, nice to have you on board for a day. Right, so uh, yeah, I made a mess of the floor, but the thing is, it's filled all them cracks in now, look. So what we can do is whack a bit of paint over the top of that tonight, and then when the floor gets wet, we can just sweep it all down into the drain and I don't have to then pop a drain all the way along here. We can just sweep it down to this section, which is the lowest point anyway, and it'll all vanish down there and away, and away like. So first things first, love. Let's have the kettle on. We'll have a coffee. Uh, we've got the dimethicone today. Oh, you put it back in packaging. Another one of the ingredients to soften up the rubber gaskets for the plate chillers. Um, yeah, I got a few messages actually in the comments. People saying they're probably different plates that have been bought to expand the chiller. I sort of figured that out anyway. Uh, I just wondered if they were end plates or something like that, because if you look, none of these plates have a seal on the end, whereas this one would have done at some point, look. So I think what they've done is drilled it out because they didn't know what the plates were for. So you're meant to have a backing plate and a starting plate that uh, prevents any product touching the pressure plates on either side. So I might just have to fill that in with a bit of uh, bit of weld. Here she is, what's striking the pose. Dimethicone 1000. That's one of the ingredients that we require for softening Das Huber. After a bit of soldering, battering and beating, we managed to get something that resembles a manifold in the bottom. 
This ain't gonna move anywhere, trust me. So if I kind of get in, if I knock this with the uh, mash paddle, it's going nowhere. To remove it, you have to pull these top corners out. And those top corners force everything together. So it ain't coming out, but when it does come out, this top one comes off, these sections come out here and these come out there, allowing you to get inside and clean everything in a straight line so we're not going to get any lumps of grain stuck in there going mouldy in the future. So now I just need to blast it with a bit of wire wool and drill the holes in the base and uh, we'll give it a quick test. folks what we've got here is the assembly for the sparge arm the rotating sparge arm so if I take this off you'll see that we've got holes pre-drilled same on both sides if I flip it round so they're every 10 mil to start with we need more water on this edge and then they space out to about 40 mil as it approaches the center we're coming in with a 22 mil copper pipe fittings and then stepping down to 15 mil so we've got the current capacity you know we can carry the water and then these are on here just nipped up on the olives so they're adjustable if I need to point the flow sideways or downwards more to get some more rotation going on and I'll take you outside in a minute and I'll show you the lid assembly what I've done there but in order so I can tighten the nut onto this compression fit in here but not seize the olive onto the pipe well I've seized the olive onto the pipe but we don't want to clamp it between the nut and the fitting so what I've actually gone and done is cut down one of these nuts here just take the end off polish it up and make sure that it winds on here and then what we're going to do is we're going to thread this on before we attach the other piece, the other, the other nut, and we're going to use this as a lock nut to prevent uh, the, the main nut tightening onto the olive. So I'll just wind this down as far as possible, and then we'll go outside, I'll turn the radio off so you can hear me, and we'll have a look at the whole assembly in action. I can't put any water through because I need to put some end caps on here. The reason I'm not squishing it flat, as I've done in the past, is because if we get any grain or anything stuck in here I can pop the end cap off and I've got a direct line of sight straight through the middle and we can just blow anything out if you get me. Right, I'm going to try and do this one handed so you can see what the crack is. So we've got a little nut assembly on here. I've done the same thing on the bottom of these fittings. So we've got a lock nut there, then the main compression nut, a little bit of pipe, you can see the pipe rotates freely in the centre so we'll pop him on there, we can nip this up and I can't get it too tight that it stops the pipe moving around if you, if you get me and then I've also cut the lid for the mash tun down and popped on a piece of angle and then if we look underneath you can see that when the water comes through we should have a loose enough fit in for that just to rotate I mean it's spinning quite freely just by hand there's no lubrication on there at all and there will be when there's some water flowing through and then on the top 22 mil BSP fitting just waiting for uh, a quick disconnect for the pump there's the manifold fits wonderfully there's no movement in that as well you can see I've bowed the edges out to prevent it being knocked outwards it's stiff as a board it won't move and then all we have to do 
is pop the lid on. So that's the front edge. That's our little spy spy section where we can peek through. Then one-handed assembly. Beautiful. She's ready to rock and roll. You would have thought that would come from that uh, container that we picked up from Derby, would you? There we go. She looks pretty damn good. Right, what's next? Because I can't get a bloody day's work in with you, with you lot. And, well, you shouldn't be such a popular motherfucker. That <laughs> yeah. chance would be a fine mate. <laughs> come on, let's go and have a pint. <laughs> Right, we're about to wrap up, folks. Craig did treat me to a couple of beers. He's a good lad, but I did treat him to a couple too. Uh, before he came to fetch me from the unit, I was figuring out the plate heat exchanger orientation. So, a quick rundown on what we've got is this would be a product side. If you note the gasket here, open for the product and this would be a water side note it closed at the product area and open for the water so we're running through each plate water product water product so in order for me to understand that i've numbered each plate sequentially eight one two three four five six seven eight nine and so on and then to determine what gasket we have we have W for water, which means that the water gasket has to be open. And we have P for the product, which means the product gasket has to be open. So that's something that we're gonna start and hopefully finish tomorrow, as well as reclamping this lid for FV1, because we did have a few places where it didn't grab quite as nicely as we wanted it to. And, oh my God. And we varnished the other lids. I've got one there and I've got one sat over here. And then we've also got the crazy children who are waiting for me to go home. And then I'm trying to orientate and configure where all the kit should be. I can see it's Descending into crazy madness right now. How does it go, Abs? You are unstoppable. Give us your best song. Abigail, I can't play football. you're going to love that sweetheart when you're 18 years old. That's going to be your proudest moment. Oh yes. Right, you can hear it's just bounce, bounce, bounce. We're off home folks. We've had a good day actually today. Look how much of the place is painted. Careful. We've got loads of the paint up on the eaves and particularly on to the side which is important so we'll pick it back up again tomorrow and we'll see you then cheers right i just want to double check that this is uh, isopropyl alcohol pretty confident it is it smells like it it smells like the kind of stuff that you were uh, well you wash your hands with at the hospital so we'll put that there. Dominic, come here, mate. Uh, have you come in there. Take that away. Away. So we'll just have a look. Oh, yeah. I think that's a tackle. 